Alrighty guys, we're back for some Boros equipment, and this is a March of the Machine, the Aftermath Standard Brew. We're going to go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat, and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well, so I hope that sounds fun to you. Also, we do got that Discord link down in the description if you're interested in joining that up. Okay, what do we got in the build here? A couple new ones. Nahiri Forged in Fury is a 6 mana 5-4 legendary creature. It has affinity for equipment, so it costs 1 less to cast for each equipment you control, which happens to be pretty good. <laughs> Whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. You may cast equipment spells this way without paying their mana costs. Seems pretty good, guys. I gotta be real with you. I would consider three, but I don't have the third one. <laughs> uh, yet, at least, right? Okay, any other new cards we have packed in here? I believe that Nahiri is the only new one from Aftermath. Well, either way, there's a, a bunch of stuff packed in, so let's go over the rest of it. We have a single Eater of Virtue. Happens to just be a solid piece of equipment overall. We have four Rabbit Batteries. Probably the best piece of equipment in here, right? We got four Ancestral Angers. So the idea of Anger is, of course, the Trample can go a long way in a deck like this. But also, we have other ways of seeing cards off the top of our deck other than the Nahiri. And when you do see cards like Ancestral Anger, casting them out and getting that card draw happens to be pretty powerful. Uh, and then the Sorcery, the one mana Sorcery, is going to be important too for one of our equipments that we'll go over in just a second. Of a couple Lion Sash in here. A little bit of Graveyard Hate. We are seeing a lot of Atraxa. Lion Sash is an equipment, so of course it's good. Uh, reconfigures only two as well, so we'll see. I think Lion Sash as a two of is going to be great in here. Have a single Blazing Crescendo. We have ways to give double strike in this deck, so a card like Blazing Crescendo could easily wrap up a game. If you have one of your double strike creatures going in unblocked and you drop the Crescendo on it, Instead of 3 damage for 2 mana, it's 6 damage because of that double strike. So also exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. So if you exile something like Ancestral Anger, it's just like an extra card that you play next turn. And then you get that card draw off of Anger. It happens to just be pretty good overall. We have 4 Hex Gold Halberds. It's a 2 mana equipment and it has 4 Mirrodin. So you get a little 2-2 Red Rebel and then immediately attach this to it, which is awesome. As long as it's your turn, Equipped Creature has First Strike and Trample, which isn't that bad, really. Like, First Strike especially is pretty decent, man. So the equip cost is two and a red overall. But at least you get that free equip on the Rebel, right? So we have four Lizard Blades in here. It's a two mana, one, one with Double Strike. Equipped Creature has Double Strike, and the reconfigure is only two. So not bad, not bad. Unfortunately, it gets completely gobbled up by cards like Cut Down and pretty much everything else. I mean, it's an artifact creature, so at least Go for the Throat doesn't hit it, right? So we got three Ajora Kadeen. So this is first Gold Warden. It's a two mana, two, two. It's a legendary creature, so we have three of them. It's Trample, and when it attacks... It gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. Then if Jor's power is four or greater, you draw a card. This is pretty powerful, man. The last couple times we played with Jor, it was an absolute beast, an MVP easily. Uh, it has a huge target on its back, unfortunately, but we'll see, man. I think it's going to put in some work. We have four Rebel Salvos here. It's a three mana instant and has affinity for equipment. I got to be real with you. If you're paying all three mana, for the Rebel Salvo, you're probably doing it wrong. It's going to easily be a two mana card in this deck and probably most of the time a one mana card because of that affinity for equipment, right? So it deals five damage to target creature or planeswalker. That permanent loses indestructible until end of turn. It just, it's really good removal, man. It's just looking for the equipment deck to be plugged into, you know what I mean? Okay, more three drops. We got four Blade Hold War Whip. This is a three mana Rock and Boros colors. Of course, it's equipment. It's got the four Mirrodin, so you get the two two Rebel and attach this to it. Equipped equip abilities you activate of other equipment cost one less to activate. Equipped creature has double strike. Not bad. It's essentially a three mana two two with double strike. And if that Rebel dies, at least you still have the equipment on the board, making all your affinity for equipment cards 
costs less, and then eventually maybe you can uh, reattach this to something, re-equip it, you know? So the equip cost is pretty pricey, though. It's three, a red, and a white, but I think it's going to be great in here. We have a single sword of Forge and Frontier. It's a three-mana equipment. Equip cost is two. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from red and green. Yeah, the protection from red is why we only have one of these in here. But overall, you never know when that's going to come in handy. If you're up against mono red, for example, that could be very good. So protection from a color is, you know, this permanent can't be blocked, targeted, dealt damage, enchanted, or equipped by anything red. So that includes your own stuff. So that's why the one of, right? But whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn. You may play an additional land this turn. So again, just pretty cool way to potentially get like if you do end up seeing ancestral anger at least you can play it and get that card draw so you're actually adding a card to your hand for example just in general i think it's going to be solid only one of because yeah we can't <laughs> attach like a rabbit battery to the creature that we attach sword and forge uh from our sword of forge and frontier oh my goodness all right we got more swords in here though sword of once and future this is a three mana equipment of course the equip cost is two creature gets plus two plus two and has protection from blue and black oh my goodness that could be huge in the current meta right <laughs> whatever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player surveil to so when you surveil uh to you look at the top two cards of your library then put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on top of your library in a random order then you may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value two or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost if that spell would be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. So if you're surveilling, you could p potentially send some extra Ancestral Angers. I know the Ancestral Angers really in here a, a little bit as a gimmick just for extra card draw potentially off of like if you don't hit anything else that you want to see, <laughs> which is a little bit funny. Uh, sort of once in future, I think it's really just plugged in this build for that protection from blue and black. I, I, I just think that's going to be so good in general. Um, now it is a you may cast so you could always just like plug the extra stuff into the grave off of the surveil and then just not cast anything too or you could potentially cast like a blazing crescendo back that is two mana but that that's pretty much it other than that it's not doing too much in here but it is a pretty powerful equipment overall uh, last card in the build aster bearer of blades this is a four mana four four legendary creature equipment you control have equip for one nice vehicles you control have crew for one that doesn't matter in here but when it enters the battlefield look at the top seven cards of your library seven is a lot you may reveal an equipment or vehicle card from among them put it into your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order solid card dude the only reason it's a two of is because it's four mana so now we do have 22 total land in here and one of them is actually a Jetmere's garden we don't have anything green in here i've just been really struggling with mana bases and flooding out when we shouldn't be flooding out or just not seeing mana when uh you know when we really should be seeing mana so opting for the jetmere's garden the cycling three is going to be fine and i also wanted more dual land in general in here because we're really just splashing the white like we we have the jor nahiri the aster lion sash blade hold but look at all look at all this man this all takes red or colorless of course there's going to be so many moments where you want to play something out and still have an open red source for a rebel salvo uh, for the opponent's turn or something like that. So extra dual land is going to go a long way. That's why I opted for Jetmere's Garden. And then if we do flood out, at least we can cycle this potentially. Of course, Crucible, Seat of the Empire. Like I said, we're really just splashing whites only, the one planes, all the Battlefield Forge and all the Sundown Pass. And I really hope Boros gets some fast land soon other than the battlefield forge which <laughs> the pain land's been rough recently man going up against soldiers and mono red so often pain land can be brutal honorable mentions guys way too many of them thought about elspeth smite but we're really leaning red speaking of leaning red yep no valorous stance this time but a way to protect our overly equipped creatures could be good thought about gilded pinions because i love this equipment same thing with thran power suit i thought about it for a little bit but i think thran power suit belongs in a build that also runs the rook hex gold nabber which is actually a pretty solid one man but cards like uh cut down ruin cool cards like this man it, it immediately gets picked up unfortunately before it gets to do a cool thing 
no destroy evil, but being able to take out enchantments is going to be very important right now in the meta. Thought about play with fire over the anger, but I like anger a little bit more in here. Just being able to give trample to something that has double strike from the blade hold or the lizard blades just sounds a little better than being able to ping the opponent's face or potentially have more removal, which we already have great removal with the salvo. So thought about angel fire ignition because boy, oh boy, is this underplayed right now. And I hear a lot of you guys are having success with, with it recently, which is awesome. I can see why. I uh, thought about the Unforgiving, not this time. We do have the Forged and Fury in here, so at least Nahiri made the cut in some form or another. Can't stress this enough, guys. This is not a Danatha build. Uh, Danatha re would require much more in the mid-range side of things and a little bit more like planned around the Danatha too, like you know, more auras and stuff, maybe more ways to give her haste too. That could be cool. And I thought a lot about Dragonwing Glider. The last time we played with Glider, it was very good. Uh, not this time around. We're definitely trying to do a little bit more of an aggressive thing here. Is that everything, guys? Oh, buddy, this one took me a while to go over. I apologize for that. Let me know if I went over it well enough in the comments. Either way, let's go ahead, hop into some ranked, and see how we do. All right, right into that first game, guys. What am I expecting? Bro, I I don't even know anymore, man. I just don't. <laughs> I guess I'm not expecting too much, but I, I want to expect something. I do. I really, really want to expect something. Ooh, um, this is probably a mulligan, isn't it? Like, we have, sure, we have our one drops, but then what? What if we don't see land for the next three turns or something? Yeah, we should mulligan. Okay. Okay, we'll keep this. I'm probably going to send the Aster since Nahiri has a chance of being like a three drop. You know what I mean? Sending a land wouldn't be the worst, but... We're actually going to go for a turn two. But let, let's see what happens. We could draw a two drop pretty easily here. We have a lot of two mana cards in here. Uh, Ancestral Anger. Okay. Actually going to go Crucible. And we're going to use that anger this turn, guys. We're going to use it. We're going to trade it out. Get a swing. Wait, hold. Okay. I mean, it's in the grave now. I like that it filters. Got us an extra damage through. It's not bad. Like, it, it was something to do for the turn. You know what I mean? Uh, we have transients. Okay. Ancestral anger number two is pretty good. It's not bad. do that I, I think they would trade though it's just gonna be blade hold war whip one less to cast unfortunately doesn't affect the rabbit battery which takes a red mana or, or uh one one less to activate i should have said that's what i meant to say there see now here is already four mana I'll tell you what dude if you can get that cheap enough that's pretty gross wow they're setting up to buff their board state. N another Ancestral Anger. <laughs> Honestly, on the double strike, not bad, dude. We could just... Let's see what we draw. I'd like to see mana. I would. X Gold Halberd isn't bad either, I guess. No, let's see what we draw. This is pretty good, dude. That's double strike. Yeah, we're just going in. Before they gain way too much life or something ridiculous. <laughs> An 8-3 double strike trample, guys. Uh, Ancestral Anger is doing so much this game. Seeing three of them. Down to two. They're, they're ready to buff this board state, man. Get some lifelink flowing, maybe. It's going to be removal for the rebel, for sure. We're going to have trouble getting, like... We're going to have trouble getting a footing here after they buff this board. At least it's Rebel. Because the other ones are equipment. So at least we have battery. We get to keep the blade. So Nahiri could still come down next turn. See a mana off the top. If we see a mana off the top, we might just want to double down on the Halberds, guys. And try to prepare a way through.
It could be Blade of... Blade Hold War Whip. Attach Battery. It's a 3-3. We swing. It has Double Strike. They chump. Doesn't have the Trample this time. And if you're equipped creature, you control attacks. Exile the top card of your library. That's probably the best bet, right? Go a little wide here. Plus, Halberd on our turn has First Strike Trample. We could actually... Attach. Nope, we're just gonna we're just doing this, man. Nahiri's gonna be so cheap next turn that we'll be able to give haste with the rabbit battery too. Like we got so much damage through. The opponents need to keep buffing this board state and find a way to gain life, which is not unheard of for Celesnia enchantments by any means. So Like they got they got four mana here. Ozolith. So a Jukai Naturalist would have been a good one for them. And then a like Jukai Naturalist, another ossification. Okay, another ossification it is. So they probably want to hit Rabbit Battery to prevent the haste. But they could hit a rebel because, you know, those are equipped creatures. But I would say battery. Yep, so they do take the battery. Because it's getting pretty scary for them. Being at two. Lizard Blades is good. For equipped creature, you control attacks. Exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. You may cast equipment spells this way without paying their mana cost. So we'd swing twice. Even if we give one of these double strike, it's not enough to get through the uh, Kami of Transients now. So we go Lizard Blades, Nahiri. Right? And we wait a turn? Because we're wide. We're wide enough now. There are two ossifications down. There's a chance that they just they just don't have more removal. There's a chance. So if we wait it out, we just full swig next turn. Is essentially the concept here. Rabbit battery was definitely the best grab. Definitely. Being able to give something haste could have been huge for us. This is a neat one, guys. They've definitely locked us down for now, and if they did find more removal, we're, we're going to need more turns. Bloff everything. They have two mana. They could play a third. Weaver doesn't have haste, luckily. Ossification number three could hit. Ozolith. So they have four. If we see removal, hex gold. Hex gold doesn't do it, but we could still find removal from the Nahiri. See, they're, they're wide enough to block everything. So we just need to find removal off of Nahiri. Right? We only hit two cards with it, though. We could put double strike on the Nahiri off of the uh, Lizard Blades. Then full swing, see three... Crap, guys. Really tough decisions. We need to figure out a way to get that last two through. And this is where that gil those gilded pinions would have been huge. Come on, Rebel Salvo off the top. Oh, rough, guys. Rough. Just a bunch of land. Uh, Blade Hold comes down for free. Army of Transients trades. They're forced to block everything. We keep the Halberds, but we lose all of our creatures. Was it worth the risk? Yes. Here's why, man. Weaver is going to be open next turn. What are we going to do if they find more removal? It's over. So we, we had to risk it. I think I think we literally had to risk it there. Lose all of our creatures. Uh, Blade Hold War Whip comes down for free. Play a mountain. Nahiri's ability was really good. Like, they still only have three creatures. We could technically still get there. They're only at two, but... I think this is leaning towards them. Uh, they they were able to see what they needed to see creature-wise to block us, so. Katilda has lifelink. See, they're going to pull right back into this, guys. We really need to see some of that removal. Uh, off the top, Rebel Salvo would get us there. Sundown Pass. Sundown Pass it doesn't do anything for us. I guess we'll play it.
Going wide doesn't do too much either. I guess giving trample to the lizard blades is fine. <laughs> giving double strike to this is fine. They're going to gain back up to eight off of Katilda regardless. I think they have a great full swing next turn. Skrelv, they're probably going to play it safe though. Swing with Katilda and maybe Skrelv a Kami of Transients to get some extra damage through. <gasps> Kallax off the top, buff the Katilda, and they can buff the Katilda again with the Ozolith as well. Ah, oh, guys. Ah, oh, this could have been, this could have gone so many different ways. Yeah, back up to 15. Well, darn. I wonder what else. Buddy, you are too late. <laughs> you arrived too late to the party. Oh my goodness. Well, let's get a fun full swing here. Um, Let's see. They're back up to 15, unfortunately. So, I guess the Rebel Salvo... I guess we hold, because everything's going to have... Let's give Trample to one of these, right? Make sure that uh, the, the Double Strike Trample's there. And then wherever they end up blocking, I guess we could go Rebel Salvo, since most of our cards have Trample too. Trample Double Strike. Actually, everything has Double Strike on this board right now. I think they can they can take it though. They don't know what's in hand. That's the thing. Could be like instant speed, something fancy. So Weaver there's fine. So Rebel Salvo on Kami of Transients, but they lose a enchantment, so they get both Kami of Transients back to their hand. Either way, Katilda wraps this up. So we go on Visitor here. Cleans up the Visitor. Yeah, e either way, Katilda cleans it, so. Pick out the visitor and then get the rest of the damage through. Oh man. Yeah, that that rebel salvo was just a little bit too late, and their their Katilda was right on time. Uh let's do Albert. Good game opponent. Good game. I I won't take the time to equip the other blade hold. We'll let them swing on in. Especially if they have the quest where you gotta attack with creatures. Hey, there's their naturalist. Ah, oh, man, this really could have gone a bunch of different ways. The Hexgold Albert in this particular match wasn't that good, but I stand by it, man. I, I think it's a relatively decent two drop, especially just for being an equipment that works with all the affinity for equipments. Also, Nahiri did a lot there. We might need to make the case for the third Nahiri, but yeah, unfortunately, I don't I don't have the third one yet, but we'll see. We'll see how much more it does today, and then we'll talk more about that in the final thoughts, of course, right? If that was a different build, if it wasn't like Selesny Enchantments, I think our, our beginning setup there was huge. I think, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. All right, this is an all right hand. Hopefully we see our third soon. But yeah, I, I think that early damage and everything, if it was a deck that didn't have too much lifelink, maybe, maybe, maybe we'd still be in it, honestly, because they locked down the board pretty well. So we're going to go right into Rabbit Battery. So right away, Rebel Salvo's... Uh, Two mana piece of just terrific removal, man. Jor. Should probably come down, right? Of course, I guess we'll get the swing first since it's not like we're... Yeah, it's not like the opponent was tapped out. I guess kind of, sort of, could have been anything, but it depends. Generally speaking, we know what we're up against. Oh, yeah, okay. Sundown Pass, let's go. Yeah, Thalia makes everything so... <laughs> Such a pain, dude. Okay, so let's go... 
Rabbit Battery. I We could Rebel Salvo the Thalia, but they could just play Thalia next turn, dude. You know what I mean? So, uh, so we swing. X is the number of equipped creatures you control. It's going to be a 4-4. Four, four. We're going to draw. I'm going to keep the Ancestral Anger back for now, since we already have Trample. Ah, oh, jeez. So Thalia makes it so we can't play anything in our hand except for the Ancestral Anger. I guess I'm just going to keep it as is. We're not going to play Anger just to filter out when that could help us win games with all the double strike in here and everything. Ah, oh, Thalia's a pain. If we would have Rebel Salvoed, then we wouldn't have got the draw off the Jor. Okay. Down to 16. Another Ancestral Anger. Rebel Salvo hit Adeline. Swing for four isn't bad. Honestly, any anything... I'm sure they trade with the Jor. So... Salvo into Thalia. It just doesn't seem great. It really doesn't. We're going to go Salvo into Adeline so they can't trade. And then swing for four. It's good, man. It's good. We get the card draw. Okay, Dahiri's not bad. Um, we just <laughs> we need to get more onto the board. Oh, man. Oh, you really, really been holding me up lately, man. It's the decks that I'm playing. The decks that I'm playing don't, like, I, I guess I'm playing more non-creature cards recently. Coppercoat Vanguard. So we got some Monoway Humans. Cool opponent. Looks solid, man. So if we see a land off of Ancestral Anger, that could be good. We're going to die next turn if I if I'm not careful. Yeah, what the heck. Let's get the draw. We're, we're also going to draw on the Jor, so seeing the fourth could be pretty pretty solid here, or pretty easy. Rebel Salvo. Sure, sure. Alright, we're going to draw off the off the Jor. They're going to take the five, because there's a chance we die next turn. Because they have... Oh, we're, we're going to die. We're definitely dead. Oh, we did see the Sundown Pass, so we will be able to get the blocker down with the Lizard Blades. Uh, which means if they just play like a Brutal Cathar, pick up Lizard Blades, they're only swinging for a 10. Ancestral Anger not doing too much. Okay, Lizard Blades, block. Block for us, buddy. So the best thing the opponent can do is play the fifth land, Brutal Cathar, our Lizard Blades, and then play second Copper Coat Vanguard. Or just second Copper Coat would be brutal too. And then any... Yeah, any piece of removal. So they found their fifth mana. That was step one of what I just said, right? Yeah, they gotta they gotta figure out how to safely get this through. Or get some better blockers on the ground. See what they see off the top. They could find an Adeline, they could find their Brutal Cathar. Recruitment, anointed peacekeeper. That's huge for them, dude, because that takes care of our Rebel Salvo. If we don't see a land off the top, we can't cast the Rebel Salvo, and they still have two chump blockers on the ground because Peacekeeper is still around. Even if the Salvo does hit the Knight Errant, they're in this, man. They are in this. Ah, oh, was there a better way to play this out? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Jor has. Jor has trample already ancestral anger can give trample to our double striking lizard blades we need to land off the top guys wait what did they hit they didn't hit our rebel salvo oh it's because of the ward the ward one on everything our rebel salvo is still gonna cost one extra because of ward so we start with ancestral anger on the lizard blades and draw land that's the best thing we can do See a land off the top with this, and then Rebel Salvo. Because we need to give Trample to Lizard Blades. Regardless, right? Land off the top. There it is. Okay. Both of our cards have Trample now. And they know we have the Rebel Salvo, so we swing. And wherever they block, we take it out. That should do it, man. That should do it. The the lizard blades, I mean, of course, should do it. 
Because, yeah, everything just has Ward 1. Unless they block with Guardian to Lizard Blades. But then we still have Trample, so... They needed a double block. And then we just take care of whatever with... So that's there. So they need to double block. Okay, Trample should just be cleaning this up regardless. So we're, we're going to do this. Pay the 1. Man, seeing the land there was so good. Great deck opponent. A uh, great match. This was uh this was a tough puzzle for sure. Give the guardian the indestructible. Either way, the trample gets through. Can I? Ah! Oh no, yeah, you still have to do I was gonna say, was it gonna let me plug more in uh to the opponent there? But yeah, you still gotta get the uh the creature damage done first. Nice. That was sick, guys. <laughs> yeah, our best way through was seeing the land for the ward cost. You gotta watch out, man. Copper Coat Vanguard is disgusting. And an uncommon, too. I love that. I love it when they print powerful uncommons. It's good stuff. That was fun. <laughs> these, these matches have been fun. Quite the puzzle to get through. There's like, the, the big problem with equipment is just like, how much equipment can you pack in and get away with it? Because a lot of the equipment isn't that good, right? Like Hex Gold Halberd, it's decent. Like, it's not bad. It's a good, I think, I think it's a solid two drop. But it's also like, imagine the other two drops that people are playing and then compare. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so like, you know, you gotta play the equipment to work well with all the, the stuff that works with equipment like Jor and stuff. And, uh, what do you guys suppose? Hex gold over the lizard blades? You know what? I don't even think, if, if they trade here, that's a great trade. That's a great trade, dude. I think they take the one. All right, let's get that uh, hex gold halberd down. And we're going to take the two probably. So they, they can cheese this two da damage through as well. Getting ready for a hasty Jor Kaden next turn and then swinging with Halberd and then the Jor gets boosted even further. This card's nasty, dude. If you can pull it off, it's disgusting. Yeah, if they spot remove the Hex Gold, that's fine. Like that's not that's not too bad. At least it's not spot removal for the Jor. By the way, if this is mono red, I love the Pit Fighter edition. Pit Fighter is like one of those cards where there's just so many good red one drops that it kind of got completely outshined, but it's actually pretty solid, especially if you're running other vampires too, which there are a lot of cool red vampires to plug into a deck like this. So, Rabbit Battery is the choice for play with fire. Okay, because we can still go Rabbit Battery into the Jor. But they don't know we have this, so. Albert is gone. Get that draw off a of Jor. Keep our hand nice and stocked. Extra land is not bad. Pawn us down to 14. Yeah, extra land's not bad at all. We'll probably go Lizard Blades, Rabbit Battery, Equip Rabbit Battery to Lizard Blades, Full Swing. Ah, uh, Lightning Strike. I feel it. I feel it in the opponent's hand. Maybe not. Maybe not. If we can keep this Jor on the board, it's really good. Lightning Strike. Okay. Swing for four. We still have Rabbit Battery if we want to block. This Rabbit Battery here. We should trade. We should trade. It's a good trade for us, man. It is. Ancestral Anger is good. Lizard Blades. Let's see if they got some spot removal for that. No? Alright. Four damage. Ooh, I just got so much lag. What was that about? I don't know if that was the game or if that was my computer. Invasion. Ah, more burn, guys. So much burn. <laughs> Alright, Lizard Blades is out of here. Luckily, we still have a rabbit battery. They know we're willing to trade Rabbit Battery, but... Oh! Rabbit Battery's gone, too. 
four pieces of burn. Oh, man. This is going to be an uphill battle, man. Swing it. Base. So they're not concerned about flipping an invasion. Okay, there they go. Yeah, because if they have another lightning strike from their hand, then they can flip the invasion, which is brutal. Lizard Blaze isn't bad. Rebel Salvo has some removal. At least this can hit the dragon if they do find the lightning strike. Ancestral Anger gets us a draw, but no haste on the Lizard Blades or anything, so... Not worth it. We wait. That would literally just be filtering because we have open mana and it's not worth it. Not when we might need the trample for the Lizard Blades when it comes time. Good draw, by the way. We needed to see a creature, so... Siobhan Devastator. Let's see where they swing first. It's going to be at the invasion, but like... They might swing on the ground, too. Nope. Okay. They could flip. We kill the 4-4. I think we just take out Devastator. We need something great, man. Alright, this is the turn where we start going Ancestral Anger. And hopefully we find something better. Oh! Sword of Once and Future. Of course, that's protection from blue and black, but like, that's a great draw, man. Good. Strike Trample. I think we get this down and ready. They have Mishra's Foundry they can power up. They're going to start flipping these. Power up Mishra's Foundry. Full swing at the three. Get a 4-4 four, four dragon. Sword of Once and Future just doesn't do as much as you'd hope at that point. Four damage through. Down to six. They're tough decisions, man. They really, really are. I'm going to hold back. That's really unfortunate. We got the card draw off of Ancestral Anger, and at least it was decent. But we can't let them flip the Invasion of Tarkirs right now. Not when we only had the one Rebel Salvo, and it's gone. So, And if we would have waited for them to take out the uh, Thunder Maw instead, then they'd still have the 3-3 Devastator ready to take out the other one. So... So let's see where they swing. I think it's going to be a, a full swing at the three defense Tark here. And then we have to consider letting it happen just for the sake. Okay, one open. So if we block, then we lose it. They lose their foundry. But then we don't get to equip the sword. It's not like it has trample yet anyways. I think we let it happen. If it's a play with fire, at least it's not hitting the lizard blades. Mano hits our face. Okay, well, I mean, as far as turns go, I mean, that wasn't that bad for us overall. Okay, equip the Lizard Blades and give it Trample. You can cast an instant or sorcery with mana value two or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. All we have is Ancestral Anger, unfortunately, right now. Do we go for it? Let him get a dragon? Six damage through? I guess so. I guess we, we don't have too many options here, man. Let's see if we can see something a little better. Another Ancestral Anger. Actually, wait a minute, guys. Because of the first strike, that's right. We get to do this ability right now, mid-battle. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Down to two. That's so cool. Oh, Blazing Crescendo. Well, I guess draw on Blazing Crescendo would be better, right? See what we see off the top. Blade Hold War Whip. Okay, they're going to start flipping some dragons here, man. Can we get there? Can we get there? I mean, on our turn, this has Trample, so if they flip some dragons, I guess they really just need another Lightning Strike for the Lizard Blades. Yeah, that's right, man. I, I, for some reason, like, I know what I was thinking when I put the deck together, but I wasn't even thinking about the first strike being able to cast something back. Like, that could be absolutely disgusting, dude. That can do wonders. 
All right, they're definitely cleaning up some of these invasions this turn. Hopefully, not both of them. Both of them would be very, very bad for us. Okay, because they can power up Foundry Swing over here, but they're at two, so they have to be prepared for the Trample. Which I guess the plan here is to have enough on the board to block the Lizard Blade. So yeah, because it's a 4-4, four four, so. Mano flips next turn. Foundry can power up. More land off the top, guys. Ah, oh, man. That's rough. And a little unlucky, let's be real, right? So we go... Blade hold. So we're forcing a block when we swing. At least we'll be able to clean some stuff up there. Eventually, they're going to flip the other Thundermon next turn, I would say. Two. Okay. Um, They don't know what's in hand, but we're forcing a block. So, let's do this. It's going to be Boundary, Swift Spear, block, take one damage. Oh, but then... Now, see, it's probably not enough, but if we can see something terrific, I don't know what we would see. No, there's nothing. We already got rid of the Blazing Crescendo. They go for all the blocks, dude. They're making sure this dies. So we better make sure we can hit as much here as possible. Thundermaw and Boundary trade for... Make sure everything looks good there, yep. Okay, <laughs> so we get Blade Hold down. I guess we play a land, right? So first of all, this only cost one to equip, so we'll do that. And then this only costs two to equip because of Blade Hold. Very cool, guys. Very cool. I guess we can keep these in hand, too. But I'm not going to. If we were up against a different build, then I could see it. But... Man. Now we gotta watch out for the flip on the other invasion and hope they don't find more burn off the top. Which, at this point, they're probably overdue. Like, yeah, the four burn from them at the beginning, it was rough. But I feel like they're just overdue. <laughs> For more, right? Like another play with fire anything. And so they'd want to play with fire invasion, full swing at it. Well, they're at two though. Man, I think we got them on the run actually. They, they need something super fancy. They need to take care of our creature first of all. And then get another creature on their board. We got two rabbit batteries out of the deck, so... Shivan Devastator for two. See, they could full swing at invasion... Get their 4-4, four, four, but we have a double strike 4-4 four, four here. Is that enough? I mean, I guess I'll start with the Aster and see what we see, what we see, right? You never know, there might be something that we want. Like a Rabbit Battery, for example. Perfect. Give haste. Full swing. Actually, we could just give it... It doesn't matter, does it? Because they're at 2. We have double strike Trample over there. Like, they're, they're, they're forced to full block. Wait, does it matter? Crap. Wait, 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 wait. One, two, three, four. Six, seven. So if I would have plugged ra Rabbit Battery onto the Rebel. So now they have seven. We have eight. They're going down to one. Oh, crap. It does matter. It does. Good blocks, opponent. I didn't think that all the way through, man. Good blocks. We're going to let them keep the Kamano. We're going to take care of that flyer. Crap. <laughs> yeah. And they, they chumped the Aster because it doesn't have uh, Trample. So we have to break through all of this. So one, two. So one's getting through. Yeah, we made sure their flyer was gone. They lost everything else. We lost our creature, though. Probably keep the Hex Gold Halberd on top, right? And we'll draw into it off the Ancestral Anger. And then we'll play it this turn as well. Just make sure. Like, the opponent's at one, so I guess we could play the long game. But if I would have just went Rabbit Battery, we would have had 10 total damage going through. And they only had 8 total to block, right? 
Unless I'm thinking wrong somewhere. But for one? Why do we have this option when we're out of mana? Am I missing? Oh, because the one is actually less because of the blade hold. Oh, very nice. This will give you the double strike, right? Put for one, sure, we'll go like this. Oh, now we don't have the one, I see. Because it's others. Cool. I kind of completely overlooked the combo between Aster and Bladehold War Whip. I don't think I've ever had the two of them on the board. GG opponent. GG, man. Very nice. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure they only had eight on the board. We could have cleaned it up last time. Oh, heck, yeah, we had fun, buddy. Yeah, we did. That was an awesome one. Well, we're 45 minutes in, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and go over the deck again. This wasn't that bad, was it? I'm excited to see if equipment can do a thing after some bans, too. Guys, I know I've been saying it all week, but what cards do you think are going to get the ban hammer? Uh, they're, they're doing, like, some kind of announcement at the end of the month. Like, I think it was the 29th, I'm pretty sure, so... It's been fun to kind of speculate what's going to get eaten up by the bands, and a lot of people's money seems to be on Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I'm thinking like Shieldred. Uh, I, I, I've I lost way more to Shieldred than Fable, I would say. Plus, I I play with Fable a lot more than Shieldred too, because, you know, I'm a red player, so... <laughs> but Fable's probably gone, and... <laughs> I, you know, I'm leaning towards Shieldred, but either way, you know, once some powerful cards are taken out, maybe a deck like this has ch a chance. Like, there's a lot of power packed in, surprisingly. Rebel Salvo's a really powerful piece of removal, but we probably need more removal in this build in general. Sword of Once and Future was actually pretty cool. I guess a second Blazing Crescendo would have been cool to have whenever we had the Sword of Once and Future over the ancestral anger which actually was really cool with our double strike cards because the first strike gets through then you can cast that ancestral anger back from the grave for the second strike and get the card draw off of it too just really cool man just every everything about it was fun everything was cool every time i play with equipments i just have a blast so on Nahiri Forged in Fury was pretty good. I think the two of was actually fine, but yeah, we could make the argument for the third one. And if you do already have the third one, then give it a shot. Let me know how it actually goes. There are going to be moments, though, where you see two or three of them in your hand at a point of a game where you just don't have a lot of equipments on the board. <laughs> and so it like kind of clogs up your hand, right? So it's kind of the same concept for Aster. You're not always going to see your fourth mana until like turn six or seven sometimes. And I mean, yeah, games go on that long easily, so uh, it clogs up your hand early on if you have too many of them. As powerful as it actually is, I think it's fine as a two of. I didn't get to see Forge and Frontier, but this could have been cool against that last match, giving protection from red. But overall, I mean, it's just not going to be as handy as once in future because you can't attach your own red cards to the card. So that's very important. Jorkating is terrific absolutely and like mvp easily it puts so much work in man it gets so much card draw the trample on it already is so important but then so many ways to give it trample as well if we could go up a fourth one i guess we we could but it is legendary there are going to be moments where this is all you see and that that's going to pretty much be an automatic loss because you need the other equipment to be on the board uh to be good there didn't get to see Eater of Virtue today, but it's still a very powerful piece of equipment. Either way, it works with the Double Strike, works with the um, Trample in here, it works with the Haste as well. So doesn't really work with the Rebels so much, but it's it's good. It's good, I promise. <laughs> it's a good piece of... Also, just having another one mana equipment works really well with all the Affinity for equipments as well, because... You can essentially play them for free on the turn that you're going to be playing your affinity for equipment cards is kind of the concept there, right? So, guys, if you made it this far into the video for real, y'all are champions. I super duper appreciate you, and I will see you in the next one.